this. Okay. Welcome to a regular meeting of the Princeton Historic Preservation Commission being held electronically via Zoom on July 18th, 2022 at 4 p.m. Pursuant to section 13 of the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of the time and place and agenda of this meeting has been transmitted to the Princeton Packet, Town Topics, The Times, Trentonian, and by filing a copy with the clerk of Princeton, who has posted it to the municipal website, www.princetonnj.gov slash meetings, pursuant to Executive Order 107, due to the state of emergency in New Jersey regarding COVID-19. Notice that the declared um, emergency uh, during this emergency, all regular and special meetings of the Princeton Historic Preservation Commission will be held electronically via Zoom. Such notices have been placed on the official bulletin board at the municipal complex and on the Princeton website. Um, do you wanna take the roll, Elizabeth? Yes. Ms. Capazzoli? I'm here. Mr. Shore? Mr. Endersby? I'm here. Ms. Satterfield? Here. Mr. Shatskin? Here. Ms. Howard? Here. Mr. Pyle? Okay, we have a quorum. All right. And thank you, Councilman Newland, for joining us. Always appreciate it. Hey, thank you. you. Good. Thanks so, um, uh, do you have any announcements, Elizabeth? I do not have any announcements today. Yeah, I don't either. Okay, so we did get minutes. It was part of the email that Elizabeth sent out. Um, and uh, Justin did the minutes and they're really good. So I hope everybody got a chance to see them. Um, so these are for June 20th, which was our last meeting. Um, did, did everybody see them? I didn't. No. Do I'm you want to, I mean, we could delay till next time to vote on it. Um, if, if a lot of people didn't see it. So that's okay. Um, we have two resolutions. One is, um, 140 Nassau street. That's the Mochi nut ramen, um, project. Uh, I didn't have any changes to that resolution. Um, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Thanks, Second. Roger. Uh, thanks, Shirley. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Um, the second resolution we have is for 220 John Street. This is actually one we heard, what, two months ago, but because they had to go through zoning, we couldn't uh, do a resolution on their demolition until after they had finished zoning. So, and we all unanimously voted for that project. Um, so is there a motion to approve the resolution? Uh, Elric, a second? Oh, Roger, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Looks like all the hands up. Opposed? Motion carried. All right, thank you. We're finished with those two resolutions. And we're moving on to 50 Stockton Street, which is the center of theological inquiry. Um, so this uh, application um, will be uh, recommendation, then it will be going to um, a minor site advisory board tomorrow, then it will be going to the planning board on Thursday. So these guys are busy. Um, Elizabeth, are they, are they already you, going? Are, um, I'm sorry, CTI, what? Is CTI going? Yes, yeah, so I mean, we're, 
we're ready. If if you've got the people yes. uh, over here, that's great. All right. Yeah, it looks like. Oh, wait, can you bring over the applicants from the attendees? Yes. Thanks. Yes. And I just promoted David, too. Oh, thank you. Let's see, Ryan's got his hand up. Yeah, we got to get Ryan over yeah, here and. Um, I'm trying to. Okay, I tried the Center of Theological Seminary a few times, but for some reason they're not coming over. It might be just taking them a while. Yeah, I see Ryan. Uh -huh. I see Kate Farewell. Uh, let's see. Um, Kate, am I missing anyone? I've got Ryan. I also tried to promote Center of Theological Inquiry a few yes. times. There uh, should be a couple of people, Elizabeth, including the architects. Could you um, give me their name? I don't think I got a list. Um, uh, Kathleen Joyce. Oh, I see her. Hold on. Kathy with her hand raised. And then um, oh, yeah. William Storer uh, is the executive director of the uh, CTI as well. I think that he's probably just listed as CTI. I keep on clicking he, him, but he won't come over. Well, he, he, he's he is on probably separately. just CTI. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. He seems to be on separately as well. The last person alphabetically is, is also him. Okay. And then there should be a Krista Kennedy, Elizabeth. Yes, I see. Yep, I've got her. Did you guys, I thank you so much. Did you guys get Jackie on? Jack. And I believe Jacqueline? Steve, Steve, yeah, Jacqueline and Steve Arnold, Steve Lederach from Arnold Associates. Steve, Stephen Lederach, okay. Okay, and how about Kara Slade? I think she's from Trinity Church, but I think that, um, I think she's going to want to speak as a member of the public. Um, okay. So the only person um, on my list again, uh, the the last person on on alphabetically, William Storer. If you could bring him over as well. Okay. Yes. Um, Kara Slade, I just want to let you know um, your hand is up, but as Mr. Kennedy says, that right now um, the chair is going to want to listen to the application, then there'll be an opportunity for public comment. So we're not ignoring you. Ryan, is that everyone? Is that good? I believe so. And, and right. I don't believe we'll actually need all of these. <laughs> we won't need everyone speaking also. I'll, that, that I'll, I'll promise as well. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so I know this is a lot for Elizabeth to do because she's Usually we have Justin and um, Justin's not here right now. So thanks Elizabeth for handling all this stuff. Um, no, he's just gonna come late. So if someone oh, lets okay. me know when he's here, I can just um, add him to a co-host. Um, okay. Elizabeth, okay. Can, is there any way you can turn up your volume a little bit? Is this better? Yes, thank you. Is that good? Okay. I have The hearing aids come next week. <laughs> Pass it around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Elizabeth, um, when you get a chance, did you want to um, just review your memo um, yes. quickly? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, the Center of Theological Inquiry, CTI, has filed for a minor site plan application to the Princeton Planning Board to make changes to the entrances in the front and the back of Luke's Hall building and other building and site improvements. Um, Luce Hall has an address of 50 Stockton Street and is further identified as block 37.01, lot 68 of the Princeton tax map in the former Princeton borough with the E1 zone. Um, the subject property is situated on the south side of Stockton Street between Library Place and Bayard Lane and lies within the locally designated Mercer Hill Historic District and the Satan National Register of Historic Places, um, Princeton Historic District and the Kings Highway Historic District. Um, this district is classified as type two, which is subject from any preservation plan review visible from the public right away. 
Um, just a general note about CTI, they are a 501c3 nonprofit New Jersey corporation, which was founded in 1978. And although it does have ties with the seminary, it does remain independent with their own mission on religion and uh, global concern. Um, so, you know, as discussed, they, um, they're coming in for the changes to the front and rear entrances. They also would like to address landscape. Um, they um, would also like to make improvements to windows, uh, replacing the roof and adding a new skylight on the south ridge of the roof, um, uh, a new geothermal system, um, some additional lighting in addition to um, a new generator. So that's kind of the scope of the work. Um, their application does not propose any changes to parking demand or um, traffic circulation, and it does not require any variances. And as HPC recalls, this application came in for a concept review in December 2021 at their regular monthly meeting. Um, originally, I believe when this application came in, this was prior to the... Um, this banning of SPRAB. So that is why this um, application will be going to the planning board um, afterwards, even though it was submitted as a minor site plan. Um, I'm not gonna go over all the um, historic properties that are within there. I think maybe the applicant will wanna do that because they did such a great job on their historic booklet. So I'm gonna not take their, you know, their, their, um, their, um, uh, thunder. Thunder. Yes, thunder, right. <laughs> Mine will be a poof, but those will be a good thunder. Um, so this site does consist of 0 0.823 acres. Um, it has the loose hall facility. It has a parking lot and various sidewalks that connect to the parking lot on site, um, to the public sidewalk on Stockton and to Stockton Avenue also, or sorry, street. Um, the building was built in 1984 by Hugh and Cole, who was inspired by the Georgian architecture style. Um, it's two story, it has a small one story um, extension on the east side of the building. And um, it occupies two floors and a basement. The exterior is red, orange, modular brick laid in a Flemish bond pattern. And it's accented by white doors, double punch windows, decorative wood cornices, which are on the top of the building, in addition to door arches and fill panels below windows and round porch columns. The building was built with a synthetic slate clad roof and it has two interior um, brick chimneys. Uh, the landscape on the property, there are street trees along Stockton and the property actually has a very large 42 inch pin oak, which is in the front uh, yard of the property near the right of way. And right behind that is a row of ornamental trees, which are mostly Kusa dogwood and a few cherry trees. Um, additional planting on the property are a few redbud and a magnolia tree on the sides of the building. Um, there are a few tall hedges that screen the parking from 206 and along the, um, I'm trying to see which property line it is, the side property line, I believe, um, there's also a tall hedge and mulberry trees. Um, uh, let's see what else. Um, so just to go through, um, one of the, um, the charges for the applicant is that they want to make their front entrance more visible from the streetscape. Uh, they wanted to have more of a presence because I believe that this was a discussion that we had had at the concept plan review that was actually kind of not um, appropriately scaled for the size of their building. So I think that they want to make that improvement in addition to they have the strategic plan where they're doing interior um, changes. And um, part of that is to do an improvement with a new um, vestibule in the back of the building um, where they're adding an addition and um, a new plaza area. And that um, improvement is actually intended to um, have more visibility between the two floors and to increase some of the sunlight, natural sunlight into the building. Um, so let's see what else we have here. Um, on the east facade, which is a one-story extension that faces Trinity Church, um, they are planning to enlarge 
some of those windows by bringing them down to the floor and again allowing more light into the building, in addition to adding a terrace off of that side. Um, and so they will add a door so there'll be access to that and they'd like to remove some of the landscape along that property line so they can have visibility of the Trinity Temple, a uh, steeple, sorry. Um, again, the roof is going to be replaced and they'll have a new glass skylight off the South Ridge. Um, the, the new um, vestibule in the rear, they'll have a new plaza area. I'll call it a plaza. I believe it's called a patio on there, but it's fairly large. But I think it kind of um, amplifies the new entrance that's, that they're placing back there. Uh, they are adding some um, new lighting, um, foot lighting. Um, they have new sidewalks that are being installed just for access to around the building to the parking lot on the west. Um, and they have an emergency generator, which they um, are going to have a fuller, fully sprinklered building. However, because their fire flow is too low, that they'll need a generator to, to help with, um, with that, to compensate for that flow. Um, this generator is going to be housed in an enclosed um, structure, um, to, uh, which is intended to reduce the noise when and if uh, testing is required. Uh, they will have a new geothermal system um, for their HVAC, um, and with that, they will be able to disconnect their natural gas connection on site. Um, the landscape, uh, that actually is a kind of a big item on their improvements, so they would like to remove all the ornamental trees that line right behind the public sidewalk to open their view up for the, um, to the building, and in addition to um, embellish more of a foundation planning in the front of the building and add some planting in the back of their new plaza area and along the side where the new East Terrace is. Um, so that's pretty much the, the scope of the work, you know, that's kind of summarized, but again, the, app, the uh, HBC is familiar with this. So I'm just gonna go to the comments and recommendations. So um, as I said, the, the compilation of the information and research in the historical uh, presentation plan exhibit supplement book was excellent. So, you know, the applicant should be commended for that. Um, the municipality does encourage the planting of native species. And I know that um, there is a, um, um, uh, there, there are um, native mixes of plant material. Um, I would encourage the applicant to recommend for HPC to recommend to the applicant for them to have the arborist look at their plant list and um, whatever comments they have, share that with the, um, with the planning board. Um, one thing I know that um, the arborist um, has discussed in the past is if there's an opportunity for larger trees, not ornamental, I believe that the applicant is um, providing two ornamental trees kind of on the edges of the front of their property. Um, he always encourages, if it's available, to have street trees to kind of give scale to the space and the setting um, in addition to adding to the inventory for the streetscape. And since Stockton Street is a, uh, is a large um, avenue, um, I think that, um, that that would be a good recommendation. Um, the lighting plan was reviewed for the photometrics. And um, I think that it would be recommended if the, if the applicant just could look at the lighting locations and possibly um, shift them around. There are some hot spots. There's some areas where the lighting is pretty intense and it kind of um, exceeds what's required. And there's other areas that um, fall short of what's required. So I think just shifting some of the locations of the light fixtures would kind of make an even uh, lighting plan. Um, the other thing is um, there is a 12 inch existing Kusa dogwood that's between tree 103 Three and a 15 inch cherry tree that will remain. Um, it was unclear on the plans whether it's supposed to be removed or not. Um, I'm assuming it's supposed to be removed because it doesn't show on the proposed plan, but it's not shown to be removed. So just confirmation on that. Um, the demolition plan does show that there is a um, free mounted sign on the front lawn um, and the applicant is asked, um, are they proposing to put a new signage that's a free mounted or one on the building. Um, if there are any hours of operation that are proposed for the new lighting, also if they could address that. And because the new generator is quite large and the proposed planting that they have, I believe they said it'll be five to seven years before it reaches the size in which it could screen it, 
I'm wondering if the applicant had considered perhaps moving it to the rear of the building if possible. And those are all the comments I have besides any um, existing or extension of utilities are recommended to be underground. Thank you, Madam right. Chair. Thank you, Elizabeth. And I just wanted to, again, compliment the applicant on the supplemental exhibits and especially for the commission members, um, pages 28 and 29 are like the best comprehensive view of the changes of elevations like I've ever seen. I mean, it really spells out all the changes they're doing on the exterior. So those two pages really, really show exactly what we're talking about. It's very helpful. And um, thank you, really great job. So I guess I'll hand it over to Ryan. Are you gonna? Yeah, yeah thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, and, and Elizabeth, uh, again, Ryan Kennedy from Stevens and Lee. It's really my pleasure to, to follow that uh, introduction uh, for this project for the Center of Theological Inquiry. Um, uh, hats off to the Michael Graves team. Uh, they really should be the recipients of all those kind words that uh, the both of you just uh, um, um, gave out. They've done a phenomenal job in putting this together for the Center of Theological Inquiry. We'll hear from them uh, in a few minutes. Um, um, we also have our landscape designer here and uh, our, the director of the CTI to go through a few words about what, um, while we were here a few months ago for a, um, <clears throat> a concept review, which we very much appreciate the opportunity to get that initial feedback and incorporate it into, into the plan, uh, really does uh, um, really help with the, with a project uh, like this. Uh, but a, a couple of uh, highlights actually that uh, I wanna uh, just remind you, and and actually, I get to deliver some good news. Um, uh, particularly, you know, the the uh, the comments on the the generator. Uh, frankly, uh, um, we can I don't say ignore them, but um, we were able to figure out a way. Uh, the design team was able to figure out a way to meet the requirements for for fire safety without the need for the generator. So we're actually a bit uh, pleased to remove that piece from the project. That was probably the the most difficult thing to to work around uh, for the site. Um, so very, very pleased with that um, uh, to simplify things, frankly, uh, for today. Um, as you heard, uh, CTI uses this building. We're actually downsizing it. Um, it is a, kind of a right size for CTI. Um, they are, you'll hear what, what it means, what increments or, or units of education they use, which is their visiting scholarship program, uh, which actually is being reduced. Uh, the square footage of the building is being slightly reduced. So you did see uh, while the, the parking is unchanged, the actual demand for parking, however you want to look at it, is actually lessened slightly uh, by the changes to the project and the changes that uh, CTI is making uh, to its to its program. Um, uh, with that, I, I'd like to um, ask uh, uh, William, or the, the director, to introduce himself. Uh, uh, and, and give a few words about CTI uh, and their mission and how, they'll, how they are currently or were using this building and how these changes, um, uh, particularly the ones uh, that Elizabeth noted uh, with it being more street friendly. Uh, I'll, I'll note that I myself, the first time I visited the site, um, frankly went to the wrong door. Uh, the, the, the current or prior door is uh, not really um, uh, announcing a street presence as the new vestibule will be. Um, uh, which was a, a big part of the uh, external changes, frankly, uh, to the building. So, uh, William, if you want to unmute yourself and introduce um, you and, and CTI, uh, now we can we can do that. Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, my name is Will Storer, and I'm the director of the Center of Theological Inquiry. People often ask me what goes on behind that red brick building on Stockton Street. Do you take in students? Uh, are you part of the seminary? If a picture is worth a thousand words, then this shows what we do. As Ryan said, we're a visiting scholar program. We bring visiting professors from around the world, from different disciplines, as well as theology, from different religious traditions, from different regions of the world. We bring them from around the world, around our table, uh, into a program with studies for the visiting scholars. But the heart of what we do is scholars exchanging their research in progress while in residence at CTI. But if we go to the next slide, Ryan, we're also very much committed to being a nonprofit and performing a public benefit. 
we aim to share our research on questions of global concern with wider audiences in person and online. Here's a recent example of our public outreach events for the local community, a public lecture we held in Princeton in March of this year on black religion and the climate crisis with a leading scholar in the field and an old friend of CTI, Professor J. Cameron Carter from Indiana University. Next slide, Ryan. For 40 years, Loose Hall has been the home of our research program for visiting scholars and our public program for the community. It has served us well, but was designed for a different age of solo scholars and typing pools. It does need renewal in our new age of greater collaboration among scholars, digital communication, and our renewed and strengthened commitment to public engagement. So we commissioned Michael Graves, as we'll see in the next slide, to redesign the interior of Loose Hall for the next 40 years, transforming it over three floors for our new program of global communication, research collaboration, and public conversation. We believe they have done so with such creativity for our mission and sensitivity to our surroundings. And so in the next slide, Ryan, what I would like to say is that the plan we are presenting for your approval this evening reflects the changing needs of our visiting scholar program and our renewed commitment to serving the public as a nonprofit. The Graves design has transformed an interior of dark corridors and closed doors into an open forum and a lantern of light and landscaped our exterior, we believe and we hope to be worthy of our historic district. And so as I hand over now to Kathy D from Michael Graves, we want to express our thanks to you, the commission for hearing our application this afternoon. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna hear from Michael Graves. Sorry, I'm talking on mute. <laughs> um, <clears throat> thanks again. And it, it, here in the front, we just wanted to bring about like the genesis and the driver of the project, which is really this interior renovation. Um, so here we've, we've kind of tagged this as a renovation for innovation and showing here the building section, really trying to open up the building, that um, skylight that Elizabeth was so kind to to mention at the beginning. And you can see here on the left-hand side, these are photos of the existing building, again, built in, in the 80s and is now somewhat tired and was serving a, a different type of program. So where, where you have, this was a, a previous uh, scholar on the research floor, um, updating the finishes and bringing in more light to bring a more collaborative atmosphere. Um, over here showing on the first floor that east room, which is uh, becoming this public floor for public engagement. And again, bringing spaces and, and upgrading the spaces to, to bring people together. And then down here on the global floor, you can see which is currently mostly uh, mechanical utility point of entries, um, taking a small portion of that space and, and using it as a, a digital conferencing room uh, so that instead of bringing uh, many people in, physically into the building, now they have the ability to gather many people uh, part physically and even more uh, through the digital connection. Uh, just a brief overview of the plans and the intended plan. Again, here is the, the global floor or basement where some of these uh, boiler room, uh, storage room are being updated into this video conferencing room here with some podcast function again. Um, over here, you can see most of this is staying as storage. Uh, Elizabeth talked about the fire pump because we are putting in a, a fully automatic sprinkler system, uh, upgrading the building throughout for life safety. Um, and then the geothermal equipment room here, which uh, is, is currently storage. So again, by upgrading the, the systems here with the well field in the front yard, um, eliminating the need for, for the use of gas in this building. 
Um, some of the other systems, again, the other the rest of the HVA system is also being replaced uh, with current energy code required equipment, as well as plumbing fixtures being replaced with code compliant and low flow fixtures. All the lighting is being replaced with LED fixtures. So again, trying to upgrade the building to, to meet with more current energy efficient standards. Here on the first floor, you can see here, the, the two small additions of the vestibules at the north and the south of the building. So this is at the top of the page, this is facing Stockton Street. And um, the vestibules are, are an addition. They, they enhance the, the visual nature of the entrance as well as provide that controlled um, indoor air quality and the passage of air and noise in and out of the building. Um, again, this is the existing common space that is again going to be a small gathering space for the visiting scholars. Um, <clears throat> again, the director office to the side, this is an existing uh, cafe that we're just going to refurbish and upgrade the millwork. Um, and then over here showing that old office space, open office space, turning it into a multi-purpose room uh, for board meetings and such. Here is that garden terrace uh, that Elizabeth was so kind to mention and we'll circle back to with the landscape. Again, this terrace is meant to support the daytime events that are going on in the multi-purpose room. And here on the second floor, again, you see that slight removal of square footage here to bring light in from above down to the first floor and then to the basement below. Um, you can see these are the study renderings of that new lounge space, as well as this colloquy room where, again, we're trying to promote uh, the more collaborative nature, at the same time preserving these small research studies uh, that are, are for private uh, contemplation. And, and so that's kind of what's going on in the genesis of what's driving the 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 motivation for the project. Coming back towards the outside and the historical here, um, just want to bring us back to the context. You can see in the center here, the red, this is the existing building. Um, and then it has a visual relationship to Morvin, which is across the street, and Alexander Hall for the seminary that is uh, facing in the other direction. Over here, you can see the, the Theological Seminary Library, which is one of the great draws uh, for, the, for the scholars, um, as well as Trinity Church over here. Um, one of the interesting things about this uh, location um, is that you know, it, it, it has multiple meanings in terms of the historic nature of it. This Mercer Hill Historic District is a neighborhood that has great architectural quality, composed primarily of mid 19th century federal and Greek revival clabbered houses, many designed by the same architect, Charles Stedman. And the neighborhood is set between and embraced by the campuses of Princeton, which you can see over here, and the Princeton Theological Seminary. So there are several religious and educational buildings that are located in this historic district. Um, and the neighborhood is included in the Princeton Historic District, listed in the National Register of Historic Places and the New Jersey Register of Historic Places. Two buildings are also listed on the National Historic Landmarks, of which CTI, which was built in 1983, is not one of those historic landmarks. Uh, one of the more interesting things uh, about it, which goes even further back in time, is the property is located near the Washington Rochambeau Revolutionary Route, which is a series of roads that was used by the Continental Army during their 14 week march from Rhode Island to Virginia. Um, and, and this route is a national historic trail. So there are sites, there's a actually a monument at Trinity Church, but this, this area as well as Morven was used as a as a place for the army to camp. So uh, obviously there's a lot of, of uh, historical significance to this particular location. Uh, zooming in closer here, you can again see this, this visual relationship across this parking lot to Alexander Hall 
And we have some shots of the existing building here as it is today. You can see to the south here, the patio, there is an existing patio that we are going to replace, uh, which also has this view to Trinity Church and again, establishing these visual relationships. Um, over here, you see the west portico, the existing porch, the front uh, facade facing Stockton. Um, and here on the bottom right hand corner, this is the south facing facade, as you see it from the parking lot. Again, uh, a shot of the historic district and some of the surrounding uh, surrounding structures. Um, again, sharing the same parcel, you can see the Lennox house, which is uh, a nice example, one of the last examples of the Gothic Victorian. Um, you have Trinity Church on the other side of CTI here with a Gothic Greek revival, and you have Morvan across the street, which is Georgian. Um, these show these these views just kind of show what the streetscape looks like in its existing condition, and most of the the structures are set back from the street. So what you have is a uh, a kind of a streetscape that is is walls, it is fences, and it is landscape. Oops. Oh, here. Uh, I just wanted to show as as part of the as part of the uh, comprehensive site plan submission. I'm just showing here. This is the utility plan that's proposed. I think there was some in, uh, additional interest in the geothermal field, which will also come up in the, the planning board. Uh, but you can see the layout of the proposed geothermal field here. Um, and again, this was the proposed generator, which we have since been able to remove from the project. Um, and then there have been some changes to the shape of the East Terrace as well. But again, showing the overlapping utilities that are going to be um, updated to support the, the project. Here, we're just showing the, the landscape plans. Um, and Stephen, I don't know if you want to go ahead and come in, Stephen from Arnold Associates is our wonderful landscape designer and architect. Sure, thank you, Kathy. Um, uh, the landscape plan, what we tried to do on this uh, plan is looking at the space, is it's, a, it's trying to balance out um, a historic character with a with somewhat of a historic landscape that's been modernized. Um, but what we have defined is is three distinct spaces: the front yard area uh, off off um, the street uh, as one space. Uh, the rear terrace area is more private space for outdoor gatherings, um, and then the eastern uh, stairs, which are actually new. Or I shouldn't say stairs. The eastern patio, which is facing out to Trinity Church. Um, so we have these three distinct spaces that, that we've worked on. Uh, the main, main entrance to the building in the front, uh, we've opened that up as, as noted, a lot of the existing Kusa dogwoods are being replaced. As a clarification, there was a question regarding the one 12 inch Kusa dogwood being, uh, whether that's removed or not, that actually does stay. Um, the other trees are being removed uh, mostly because of the installation of the geothermal. Uh, but in answering to some of the other questions regarding planting larger shade trees along uh, the interior line of the property, uh, in some ways, I would tend to recommend against that simply because of the geothermal system. If there's any repairs and excavations that have to take place with those lines, any large shade trees in the future would, would be compromised as a result of that. So that's why we're kind of recommending these uh, smaller flowering trees. These are um, the ones we're proposing along the street are, are service berries, which will get up about 25 foot um, and you know 25 foot down, uh, width itself. So a little larger than some of the flowering trees and what uh, most people are familiar with. Um, but, uh, and that also allows a little more open view to the main entrance of the building. The foundation plantings around the front of the building mostly comprised of native species, other than some boxwood, um, again, more of a historic plant, as well as, as in the one corner, in the corners having um, 
uh, upright evergreen hollies, which again, not American hollies, but a little more substantial uh, uh, hybrid hollies. Uh, the side garden over on the east, uh, there's a terrace that, that becomes an extension of the multi-purpose room there. Uh, we're proposing removal of a, a large mulberry tree, which is actually uh, um, blocking the view, but it's not actually the best of speed and best of condition and have that tree removed and create a smaller garden space around the back there, private garden space. The terrace, this is the one thing that's different from previous plans that were presented to you. Uh, the, the stairs are being removed and we're creating a small extension of lawn uh, that would then slope down to the existing lawn, uh, creating an outdoor you know, uh, gathering space uh, on, uh, adjacent to the upper terrace. And then that would be somewhat enclosed and protected from the street with, with a taller hedge uh, to, the, to the north. Um, the, the other thing I forgot to point out too along the, the main entrance along the front um, is we're proposing a low hedge, probably about a four, three, four foot high hedge uh, along the sidewalk area, just, just along the line. Uh, just to help define the property. And in many ways, kind of carrying out some of the historic patterns in, in some of the buildings around this district have hedges out along the road. So we're gonna continue that in, in place of like a fence, which some of them have fences. Um, also pointing out in the front, uh, we're removing, there's a hedge that's over by the parking lot. That is um, a burning bush right now, about eight, 10 foot high bur burning bush, which is considered a, an invasive species in New Jersey. Um, it's a nice, tall, healthy hedge, but uh, we're actually proposing to take it out and put in an evergreen hedge, which then will give you a year-round uh, screening of the parking lot from, from uh, the roadway there. Uh, moving into the rear of the property, uh, there's a, a terrace. There's an existing terrace now that's, that's extending off the building. We're, we're expanding that just slightly, creating a little more space. And then we're along the rear property line, there are existing um, crab apple trees now uh, in poor condition. Uh, and so we're proposing that those be removed and be replaced with uh, a Yoshino cherries, which will get fairly large and give some shade to that rear patio, as well as removing an existing juniper hedge adjacent to the property, adjacent to the parking lot, replacing that with a taller evergreen hedge, just to kind of help define and create more privacy with that rear patio. Uh, and then buffer that up with a new planting bed between the hedge and, and the patio. Um, over to the east of that patio, there is a rain garden that's being proposed of, uh, for water and that's being planted up with native species uh, of plant material. So uh, in general, I would probably say like 60%, if you look at the actual number of plant materials, probably 60% of plant materials here are probably native species. Uh, the other ones we're proposing are not native, but they are adaptable and they are also deer resistant, which is critical in, in this particular area. And that's why we're kind of selecting some of these plants the way they are. I mean, everybody knows in Princeton, you know, you can plant whatever you want, but if you put an arborvitae in the corner of the building, it's going to be chewed up. So, you know, we have to balance, we're trying to balance as best as possible this uh, utility of trying to create a historic character with a modern needs of getting uh, native plant materials uh, within the design, which I think we've, we've worked out a nice balance with this uh, for the uh, Institute. Um, the lighting, if I might just talk on that briefly, um, we do have some uh, lighting, there's lighting spillage from the, from the main entrance. I'm not certain exactly where, what areas that you were talking about uh, that was brought up regarding lower levels of lighting. Uh, the main walkway coming in from the, from the street, uh, there is a little gap of lighting there, but we really don't want to emphasize that walkway too much with, with lighting. Uh, there is the potential use that they might use that front lawn, and, and these are low, low voltage lights, which aren't really well fixed. And I don't want to have something sticking out in the middle of the lawn that somebody might knock over or break. But that entrance coming in off the street really isn't that, that's not the main, that, that's not the entrance that the Institute is looking for people to be coming in on. It's really gonna be on, on the parking lot side or the rear uh, from the parking lot in the rear. Um, so anybody coming to visit within the site would be parking on in the parking lot and then be uh, routed around the front of the building to that front doorway there. Uh, some of the lights in the front, again, because we wanna emphasize a little more of that walkway, 
uh, those walkway lights are angled. Um, all the light is pointing down, so there's no light spillage off the site, and uh, there is no uh, direct um, glare from the light fixtures themselves. So it's really what's being kicked down to the surface. We can push them further apart if, if you so desire. Um, right now, I think we're, we're averaging about, at least in, in the line of the lights, probably like one and a half, uh, maximum two foot candles. Uh, we could take that down a little more, space them out if you'd like. Um, the other areas that we have are just in the rear terrace area uh, for the rear patio. That's where we have lighting there along the patio. That's averaging out about maybe two foot candles at the most. Um, but, uh, and that, you know, however you'd like us to do that, we can adjust that accordingly. Uh, the east terrace itself, that is being lit specifically just any light spillage out from the building um, from, in, from the interior. So we want to keep that as very low, uh, low key um, in its impact and lighting. So that, I think that covers most of the lighting uh, landscape and all, it's, if anybody has any questions, uh, unless you want to continue, Kathy. Nope, thank you, Stephen. Um, here we have a, a photo moving to the, to the building itself uh, of the existing building, um, showing some snapshots here of the, the original synthetic slate roof. It's one of the first um, issuance of this synthetic slate type product. Um, the painted wood cornice. These are these early proto double pane type window system uh, from Pella, these double hung windows uh, with these uh, internally not fully divided lights. Here is the south facade patio. This is the area that we are removing. Um, again, the west facade, noting those ornamental columns, and then the east facade, again, showing this window bay that we are going to enlarge. I think there was a question about the signage, uh, which you can see prominently here, um, and there's, there's currently no signage design being, complicate, uh, being contemplated at this time. Um, the signage will be subject to fundraising, uh, which is not uh, there yet, um, and at that time it would be subject to municipal requirements in its development. Um, here moving to the, the rendered elevations, again here just trying to show the before and after of the existing condition, uh, changing those windows to these are uh, an upgrade to a more energy efficient window. These are fixed where these are double hung. And again, showing that, that uh, prominent vestibule here. We're showing here on the left, the previous version that we discussed uh, earlier at the concept review. And again, I just wanna highlight the changes the, in material here. This, this, this entrance is now was originally proposed as being white brick is now being proposed of, of an EFIS type material. Still that, that glowing white uh, front entrance you can see the, the difference between the two, as well as those low planter, I mean, low sight lights that Stephen was talking about. Here you can see on the south, again, this is the south facade. Um, and here is the replacement, uh, again, trying to let in that light with the, the increase in glazing, uh, with the here you can see the, the, the low profile skylight showing at the top, and we are removing the, the brick chimneys as well as part of this project. But bringing, bringing in that light, I think a lot of effort has been spent since we last spoke to you about trying to balance the internal light versus the external light so that we, we achieve not only bringing in more light, but a good quality of light uh, versus uh, a sense of glare. So that's what's showing the before and after here. Uh, another, uh, another update is the, alum the proposed aluminum clad uh, panels here. Uh, we have since had a design change to move these to a zinc, which is more of a, a duller gray color um, versus the shiny aluminum metal. And then again, the brick that's shown here on the left going to this EFIS material with a brick base for durability. Just some blow ups again of the, of the materials and the details on these additions.
And then again, the, the revised rendering. So here we're showing that, 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 that low site lighting, the new here, this, this oblique view of that new. We've taken this curve that we were showing uh, before and brought it into the vestibule space as well. Um, and then the comparison of the, the current building itself. Here, we've, we've done a nighttime study to try and show what that exterior lighting will, will, will support. Here from the south, again in the bottom left-hand corner, the existing condition, as well as the proposed new south-facing facade. And you can see here, we've developed this, this uh, visual through uh, not only for a path of circulation, but also for vision. And again, on the bottom right here, showing that expanded patio with that view to Trinity Church. Here, just showing the, the updates to the east and the west. Uh, there's currently some existing doors here that the client has requested uh, be removed and replaced with uh, just windows. And then this expansion here of those existing window bays uh, over here on the left to access this patio, this new patio, and then on the right to maintain that visual consistency. Um, again, the updated study of that patio, as Stephen mentioned, uh, when we last met with you, we were contemplating these steps, which is now uh, transformed into this gently graded lawn. And again, just moving here into some views showing the existing condition and the proposed, you can see that curve of the vestibule coming in and out of the new front door, as well as this more contemplative side garden. Again, here showing the, the new building and the proposed entrance is working in concert with the landscape. You can see the hedge that Stephen has proposed as well as these new decorative trees to reinforce the entrance while opening up the visibility of the building. And again, from the other direction. Uh, so glad this is where the emergency generator was proposed with its shielded planting. Uh, fortunately, we have uh, we have established that we no longer need that generator and no, are no longer posed with that design challenge in our front yard. And that's our presentation. I, we just wanted to give credit to the entire design team. There are a lot of professionals uh, involved in this and, and thank everyone for all their efforts. Um, and then we are here to answer any questions or provide any additional information that you might be interested in in reviewing. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so thank you so much. I'd like to go around to the commission and uh, get any feedback. Are there um, questions, responses? I want to start with Elric because I think Elric had a lot to say last time. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just, I, I, I feel like this is the emperor's new clothes. It's just, it's to me, it's so discordant. It doesn't, it, it the, the, I, I, internally, I have no question. I mean, it's nice to have more light and, the arrangement of fun rearrangement of functions and whatever it really doesn't affect the community it doesn't affect the streetscape or the landscaping landscaping i i i think is um is well i mean i'm i'm all in favor of landscaping because it helps to obscure the building <laughs> um it's just it's an unfortunate building to begin with you had a you had a an, an an ugly stepsister of a building on that campus to deal with. And I appreciate the fact that you've had to deal with it, but I, I'm thinking about colonial revival architecture from the turn of the last century and the vocabulary and the proportions and the, and the, the, the decorative elements that are involved. 
And to me, the vast irony is that there was nobody who was better suited to, to executing that style than Rolf Bowen. And half a block away was the centerpiece of the, of the, the, the gateway to Princeton and, and a monument to his efforts is about to be torn down by the same institution which had this building built 40 years ago, replacing a really important earlier structure. And um, it, 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 the irony is, is just overwhelming to me. Um, I hope the trees grow fast and I, I don't doubt that everybody put a lot of effort into it, but frankly, I, I had such respect for for Michael Graves himself and his sense of proportion and materials and color and 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 I see none of that reflected here. I'm so sorry. Enough all right. Well, thank you, Alric. Um, I guess uh, I'd like to keep going. Um, let's see, Shirley, did you have any comments? Um, the, the only comment I have is that um, I'm kind of traditional and um, the uh, facade of the front looks a little more modern than I would like, but then it's not my building, but uh, that's the only thing. I love the, um, the, 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 the hedges and the, um, the foliage, but I'm kind of concerned about the uh, modernization of the front of the building. All right, thank you. And, and just to remind everybody, so this is uh, what we would consider um, a non-contributing building in the district. So we're not, we're not dealing with um, this particular building uh, contributing to the designation of the district. It's, it's a modern building and it was built in the 80s. So there is a different kind of approach um, in the um, Secretary of the Interior standards than let's say um, an existing um, historic building that's contributing. So um, from that perspective, um, maybe the modernization is a, a you know, a little different. Um, I don't know, Frida, do you have anything? Um. I, I mean, I do like it. It's pretty close to the uh, concept. I love the uh, the way they kept a lot of the brick front and just you know open the um, certain certain size of it. I also love the landscaping. Um, yeah, I like the plan when it came for review. So and I still do. So okay, thank you. And Roger, did you? Yeah, no, I thought it cleaned up nicely from the concept review. It was a little more, uh, oh, it's, put it this way, it's a little more self-contained now. It wasn't, it, it had a little more dissonance going uh, in the earlier version. Uh, I think the placement of the building, the non-contributing status, um, the fact that it's really not in your face as you're going down Stockton Street, um, all contributes to the fact that it's, uh, you know, pretty, a good design. All right, thank you. Um, David, are you on the computer too, so you can see things? I, I'm here and I've been following. Okay. Um, um, recognizing Elric's comments and where that's coming from, I still move on to what's been proposed in that building that's standing there today. Um, I liked what they came up with in the concept review. I like how it's been carried out and um, wish them all the best. All right, thank you, David. And uh, again, I'd like to voice um, my support because I feel that given this building's origins, which is in the 1980s, um, I think it's an improvement um, and functionally we want it to thrive and we want the community to be able to use the building in a way that helps it succeed. So, um, you know, I, I, I do support this. Um, are there any questions for the professionals? Um, yes, uh, uh, Elizabeth. 
Um, I just want to know we had um, they had submitted to us. I don't know if you can see it, these two samples. And so I believe that with the change of material, these are no longer, I don't think you can see it actually, these are no longer what's being used, is that correct? Uh, there is one, we still have the the uh, the curtain wall and storefront window system is still the anodized aluminum, Okay. right? It, it's really just the box itself that we're proposing the upgrade to the zinc metal finish. So okay. yes, we do owe you that sample. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Um, if not, is anyone willing to make a motion? I make a motion. I'm not opposed to it. It's just that I'm a little more traditional, but I, I will agree that the building is good. I guess I could say that, yeah. Okay, thanks. Oh, and I'm sorry, David, I didn't see your hand up before. Oh, that's fine. I can be the second. Oh, great. Okay. So, um, and uh, let's see, I don't, I didn't really hear any conditions. Ed, did you hear any? Uh, no, just some of uh, Julie, you know, underground utilities, things of that nature, but uh, we'll get the, the uh, memorandum uh, drafted tomorrow morning and get it over to you, Julie. Okay, so I guess we'll just, um, uh, oh, and David, did you want to raise your hand again? No, maybe not. Um, so, Elizabeth, do you want to take a roll call? Sure. Ms. Capazzoli? Yes. Mr. Shore? Yes. Mr. Endersby? No. Ms. Satterfield? Yes. Mr. Shatskin? Yes. Ms. Howard? Yes. Thank okay, you. motion carried. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, um, I'm, I also serve on the planning board, so I'll, I'll see you there. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, so you much. very much. All right, and thanks for your presentation. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So we do have one more application. Um, and so I, I see Justin's here now, so maybe he can help with bringing people over. I've got two of them. I've got Tom Letizia. I've got um, Ralph from Van Ort Harvey. Um, okay. Hello, and yes, I can help if you just tell me the names that are tricky. Yeah, I don't, I have to ask Tom. I, I'm not sure I have a list. Tom, um, is there someone else on your team that needs to come over? Hi, uh, Elizabeth, yes. Uh, Leslie Dowling or Carlo uh, Momo, do you see their okay. names? I see Leslie. Okay. Um, I don't see Carl. I think he's with her. So if you bring. Oh, her okay. Over, yeah. Okay. Uh, She's been promoted. You'll, you'll promote him as well. And then uh, Raul Momo. Yep. Okay. I, that should be it. Okay. Thank you. Great. So this application is uh 7074 Witherspoon Street, um, CRX Associates. Um, I think we all know what building it is. <laughs> so Elizabeth, do you wanna um, go into your report and, uh, and we'll go from there? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to clean up from the last one. Oh, sorry. No, yeah. no, no, it's me. Um, Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. So the applicant CRX Associates LLC has filed for a major site plan application to the Princeton Planning Board for a mixed use development. So the project is identifies block 20.04, lot 52 in the Princeton tax map of the former Princeton Borough and further known as 7074 Witherspoon Street. The property is, um, sorry, this actually is wrong. 
um, oh, sorry, the property is in the central business district zone and currently functions as commercial use and apartments. The applicant wishes to demolish the existing building on the property and construct a new three-story structure. The existing Terra Mono Bread Company established mill will remain in a smaller space on the street level of the new building and a new full service restaurant will occupy the remaining square footage on that street level. The upper floors will provide two one bedroom apartments on the second level and one two bedroom apartment on the third upper level. A variance is requested with this application for parking um, requirements, um, which no parking is provided with this. Um, the property is situated, as everyone knows, it's on the west side of Witherspoon Street near the corner of Paul Robeson Place. It contains 0 0.112 acres. It falls within the suggested central residential historic district of the historic preservation element of the Princeton Master Plan. Request was made by the planning board at their April 21st, 2022 meeting for the Princeton Historic Preservation Commission to provide a courtesy review for this application. So um, because, um, and, and I know that the applicant's attorney does not, dis does not agree that this is in the recommended district. And I believe that that can be a discussion that we have later, but uh, this is a way that I read that part of the master plan um, because um, it is in the master plan according to the MLUL 4055D-10-110 that um, HBC does have an opportunity for a courtesy review. And because it is in the jurisdiction of the planning board that they would provide their um, comments to them. Um, and with that, um, HBC does serve as advisory to the jurisdiction board, which is the planning board in this case. Um, so according to the Weiss Preservation Planning LLC property inventory for this property, which was done in 2015, the property is classified as a contributing property in the nomination report of the Wisdom Jackson Historic District. And I believe for most of you who are familiar with this process with the Witherspoon Jackson uh, within Weiss Preservation Planning's report, they did um, recommend that the geographic limits of this district extend to include this and um, uh, a few other properties on the other side of Paul, uh, excuse me, of Witherspoon Street. Um, and there were also other properties that were adjacent to Bayard Lane. However, uh, at that time, um, HPC was really um, wanting to move forward with the designation of the Witherspoon Jackson Historic District. And they felt because this property was on the other side and was at that time covered um, kind of as a recommended district, they felt that that would be something that could be um, carried out in the future that there was still protection to some level for this property and that it could be either incorporated into the central business or designated as a new district, which would be the residential central district. Um, so the, this building is to have been believed to be a marriage of structures according to Weiss Preservation's inventory. The Southern portion of the building is two and a half story, three bay, and the Northern is really two story and two bay. Um, both buildings have a gable roof. However, the North building has a compound slope off the front and flattens to meet the cornice of the adjacent building to the South. The combined structure has a centered entrance with decorative pilasters and a cornice above. The one story structure to the South, currently occupied by a little taste of Cuba, has a flat roof. All doors are recessed with large display windows. So the existing site is fully developed. Um, and a little history on this property. So the pro subject property was a location of Mrs. Virginia Mills Beauty Salon for 45 years. Mrs. Mills was born on Cemetery Street in Princeton and opened her salon in 1993. In 1997, she retired with 300 attendees at a retirement party. Her husband, yeah. Lieutenant Cornell Berkeley Mills was the first African-American postman in Princeton. During Mrs. Mills' years in business, the property was owned by Plurinda and Lucy Toto, who purchased the property in 1924 from Mary E. Murray. 
Lucy Toto, born Lucia D'Andrea on June 20th, 1986, was born in Italy. She was a wife of Florinda, also known as Flory Toto. After immigrating to Princeton in 1912, Lucy and Florindo opened Toto's Market, a grocery store and meat market. It was first located in 114 Witherspoon Street, the corner of Jackson and Witherspoon Street before Paul Ropes and Place was built. Lucy worked at the market until she was 75 and she passed away in 1972 when Toto's was then owned by the family business Toto's Enterprise until 1997 when it was then sold to CRX Associates. Toto's Market served the Princeton community for 75 years. So there is a long history to this property. Um, so the existing two and a half and one story building on the site um, currently contains 2,791 square feet on the first floor. And it's assuming a similar square footage on the second floor. Uh, to redevelop the existing site, again, as discussed, the applicant wishes to demolish the building and construct a new three-story, 36.5-foot tall building uh, with uh, a bit over 7,000 square foot to use as a multi-use. Um, again, it's going to be a, a mix of commercial and housing. Um, and they also intend to have a 530 square feet of outside restaurant seating. Uh, with their design, they have accommodated bicycle requirements. The basement, excuse me, the basement will provide bicycle storage for four residents and six employee spaces are gonna be available in the covered bicycle uh, racks in the back of the property or on the side. And there'll be six public or patron bicycle spaces near the front of the restaurant entrance. Other amenities for the residents include an elevator, staircase system, tenant storage space, and a recycling trash area. Um, and as uh, the consultants, um, traffic consultant had stated BFP, although they are not providing any parking spaces, um, he does emphasize that the municipal owned Spring Street garage and Palmer Square garages are within easy walking distance to and from this property. Uh, the driveway will be um, improved with a new existing curb cut and a new concrete apron and will remain a 20 foot wide to be able to provide access to the recycling and dumpster area and the bike rack. Um, I'm not gonna go over the details of the building material at this point. I mean, you know, it is on the drawings. Um, part of their um, improvements does propose for awnings, particularly fixed metal awnings that project six feet on the street level. Um, their outdoor seating area, as mentioned, um, they're going to have 36 inch high metal railings and 36 high metal, metal planters to contain and separate the eating space from um, the driveway and from the public pedestrian traffic. Um, because the site is fully built, um, they intend to still do the same for the, the new development. Um, as far as landscaping goes, they're going to have a living wall which is gonna be designed with the green screen wall terrace system that's gonna be facing onto Witherspoon Street. Um, they're gonna have a green roof, which is gonna be 1,050 square feet, which are gonna be planted with ornamental grasses. And then on the upper level, there is a terrace trellis, which will be having, have ivy growing on it. Um, they're gonna have two types of lighting and all lightings will be on timers. Uh, one of them are going to be, uh, and they're both going to be wall mounted. One is an accent floodlight, which is going to be mounted above the green screen trellis at 30 feet, six inches. So it's going to be right above where the trellis ends. Um, and the second one are LED sconces, which are placed um, at the entrances to the um, entrance to the apartment, the main entrance on Witherspoon Street, and the, the slider doors that they have on the back, which faces onto Paul Robeson. Uh, let's see, what else do they have? Um, I think that that's pretty much it as far as their site improvements goes. Um, so we're just gonna go to the comments. And so, um, so historic preservation is gonna consider this an important historic property. 
that's um, really connected to the commerce and historic landscape of downtown Princeton, but it also has a cultural history to the Witherspoon Jackson Historic District. Um, so the applicant is urged to consider um, retaining and preserving part of the streetscape building to be able to preserve that history and develop on the back of it. Um, the other thing which the commission, and again, they'll talk about this, that they might consider is perhaps the demolition of the one story portion of the building. And again, being able to develop on that part. Um, these other items are pretty small. Uh, let's see, the only thing that I would say is that the, um, that the new um, and improved sidewalk along Witherspoon Street, the applicant should just coordinate um, what that is with the new Witherspoon Street improvements that's right now being built along that street. So whatever material replacement of the sidewalk, you know, um, we would expect that you would coordinate with the engineering department to, again, um, use the same material within the public right of way and whatever you have on uh, your property, which is adjacent, that, that it be compatible. Um, and there's just a few questions asked of the applicant. Um, because of the green roof and the living wall, if there's an irrigation system proposed for that, um, will the roof have any available space um, for the residents within the building to be able to use? Have solar panels been considered up on the roof? Um, the floodlight fixture didn't specify on the plans, but I know that there's a variety of color choices if you know what that might be. And um, let's see, um, also the, what does this say? Oh, there is um, on the roof, there are two roof mounted mechanical equipment that's adjacent to the two bedroom unit. It was very hard to tell from the drawings, but if you could just confirm those are enclosed and they're not open on the outside with the parapet screen. So that's all that I have. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm available for any questions. All right, <clears throat> thank you. Now, since this is, um, a courtesy review, our comments will just be compiled. There's no vote here. Um, it's just uh, individual members expressing their views. So um, I'll turn it over uh, to Mr. Leticia, maybe, or whoever wants to go first. <laughs> uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, Tom Leticia with Troutman Pepper in Princeton representing uh, the applicant. CRX Associates. It's a pleasure to be before uh, the commission. It's been a while. I often do not like starting out a, a, an appearance before this uh, body by um, focusing on the law a little bit. You know, um, so I, I will be brief. Uh, as as Miss Kim indicated in her uh, introduction. Uh, we object to the HPC uh, having any authority uh, to review uh, this application. Uh, Ms. Kim indicates that the municipal land use law allows the HPC to have an advisory role in cases where a property is, and I'm quoting here, identified in any component of the master plan. Now, I have reviewed the master plan thoroughly and all its elements, including obviously historic preservation element. And I could not find this property identified in any section of the master plan. It's true, there is a section of your hysteric, historic preservation element that makes reference to a future central residential district. I believe that's the, uh, the title of it. However, there is no map indicating where that district would be located. It merely says it's north of the central business district. Well, central business district has some length to it. So I'm not sure what part of the central business district to the north uh, is a proposed district. But there is no reference to 7074 Witherspoon Street in the master plan. So uh, we obviously um, take issue 
that uh, this has this uh, property is identified in the master plan. Um, so for the record, I um, continue that objection. Now I do understand at a meeting in April, the planning board, without any notice to us, by the way, uh, asked the HBC to do a quote unquote courtesy review. Uh, again, I could not find anything in the law that uh, permits a courtesy review. Uh, so again, I, I object uh, on that basis as well. However, having said all that, we are here. <laughs> uh, you know, we're not ignoring the HPC. Uh, we're, we're here in good faith and hoping that with some discussion, perhaps, uh, you know, we can incorporate something into the plan that will commemorate the, uh, the history that was uh, summarized by Ms. Kim, uh, which we don't take issue with. Uh, all that's you know, accurate, uh, but I think there are ways that perhaps in this new building, uh, we can uh, show evidence of that history and, and tell the public who will be um, customers of this new restaurant and bakery and, and, and even the, uh, the apartment uh, uh, tenants uh, about uh, the history, what occurred on this property. Um, so, you know, with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Carlo Momo, who's uh, one of the partners of CRX. I'm sure you're very familiar with Carlo and his brother. Uh, they own several businesses uh, in Princeton, very successful. Um, uh, but, it, but the business that's in this building uh, does have some problems in terms of, of, of surviving, uh, thus the need uh, for this uh, new project. So um, in term, I mean, I'll try to get to the chase and then I'll have Mr. Momo um, provide some uh, color. But if we're going to be spending an hour or two tonight, or this, uh, this afternoon, talking about preservation of the building, then we're not going to get anywhere because that's not going to happen. We don't, we don't have to uh, preserve this building in any event. You can't require us to preserve the building. Uh, we have the right to uh, demolish it and, and install a new building. And um, that's, that's our current plan. Uh, but you know, again, maybe there are things that can be done uh, to try to preserve some of the history, um, which as I understand is really not the building itself. It's more of what occurred on this property how can that be uh, commemorated uh, going forward? So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Carlo. Yeah. Hi, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and uh, my name is Carlo Momo. Uh, I prepared a, um, a short statement, if I may read it. Sure. OK. The property at 7074 Witherspoon was acquired by Raul and myself nearly a quarter century ago. Uh, since that time, the public library was demolished and rebuilt, completed 2001. The Arts Council of Princeton was substantially renovated and rebuilt 2006 to 2008. The residences at Palmer Square were built as all new construction, nearly five years of demolition and construction completed in 2012. And most recently, Elements Mistral building underwent substantial expansion reconstruction 2014, 2015. In summary, literally all neighboring structures have been either partially or entirely rebuilt to suit the needs of those establishments. Years of nearly continuous demolition and construction caused major disruption to our business operation, including extended street closures, sidewalk closures, parking space closures. The library construction itself resulted in multiple 20 foot construction dumpsters, taking all available parking spots in front of our bakery for nearly two years. And I don't know if you can recall, the, the entire street was just blocked off. Um, and all this at indescribable level of uh, general disruption that has put enormous operational financial strain on Terramomo Bread Company and our tenant, Little Taste of Cuba. 
In fact, the library construction very nearly led to the shuttering of Terramomo Bread Company. Were it not for our restaurants holding up the bakery financially, which they continue to do so this day. This strain has continued with the town's recent extensive civil projects along Witherspoon Street and throughout Palmer Square. The impending construction of the Griggs lot will further extend this strain for years to come. Terramoma Restaurant Group has been very patient and supportive of neighboring businesses and has also absorbed a great deal of financial loss through the consecutive surrounding construction projects, followed by the unimaginable losses that came up, came with the pandemic in 2020. We have carefully considered the viability of the bakery building in its current state and its inherent inability to meet our needs and have therefore decided it is now the best time to undergo and complete and a complete rebuild of 7074 Witherspoon Street. Our aim is to create a new building that will function for our hospitality business in a manner that, that the existing building has never been able to do. Given its age, structural and foundation issues and the multiple floor levels that have, um, that have never allowed us to utilize the entire structure as one business without adding a maze of ramps. Currently wheelchair bound or otherwise disabled customers or families with baby strollers cannot enter the bakery. While the existing building is understandably charming to many, it can no longer function as a viable uh, structure with its multiple levels, zoning nonconformities and extensive structural issues originating in the foundation of the building. Um, Ms. Uh, Ms. Kim pointed out that the, um, uh, that that this was the site of, of the former Virginia Mills Salon. And from my understanding, um, the actual site was where uh, Little Taste of, Cure, of Cuba current, uh, currently resides, which you also, in your recommendation, proposed to tear down. So, um, uh, which is to me a little curious. I'm not, not quite sure what we're saving. To me, the, uh, this, the, the attempt is uh, to save the facade is really a folly for the entire Witherspoon Jackson uh, neighborhood. Instead of taking the Virginia Mills story and, um, and, and really just commemorating it properly, it's really a success story because in 1936, when Palmer Square was being developed, everything around there got uh, uh, was condemned, except including, but uh, 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 the uh, the the uh, the town was unable to to get the condemnation granted. Uh, the Griggs lot and the the CRX building, our building right now. So uh, it's kind of ironic. At the time, it was it was supposed to be gone, and here we are talking about you know, many, many years later, talking about saving something that really uh, is, to me, is, is kind of uh, disingenuous. So um, uh, we very much support the, uh, you know, as, as, as Mr. Letizia mentioned, support somehow commemorating, whether through some, you know, storytelling within the building on the building, in the little park along the driveway there, some kind of signage, something I mean, we definitely we would we would want to do. Um, however, uh, you know the building itself is in is in terrible terrible state and needs to be uh, addressed. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Um... Did, uh, Roel, did you want to say anything? No, you're good. Okay, I'm going to go around. Uh, David Shore, you've had your hand up the whole time. Did you want to say something? My, my hand up was a mistake. Uh, um, that, that wasn't any indication. All right. I'll do my comments after everybody else. Sure. Okay. All right. Um, Roger, did you want to comment?
Sure. I, I understand uh, Carlo's point of view. And, you know, I have to compliment the Momos on their uh, great community spirit all these years. They've been uh, a great part of the community and have not stinted at all in terms of uh, contributing to uh, the community. Yeah, it's it, to me, it's it's still a loss. Um, I, I, I'm heartened by the idea of some type of uh, historical uh, memory of the building. Uh, and uh, maybe we can add that to our letter. Um, but uh, it's, it, you know, looking north from Hulfish Street, this is gonna be the new Princeton. And um, I'm, you know, having said that, I'm concerned about uh, the relationship of the building to the library, for example. Uh, you know, is the verticality of your building going to complement the columns in, in, in the library? Looking south, it's the last remnant of uh, 19th century Princeton in that area, and we're going to lose it. Uh, it. It will be gone forever. Um, the, uh, I was looking at the, the uh, National Park Service has a little squib on its uh, website about historic preservation. And if you excuse me for going on the soapbox for two seconds, let me just read this to you. Historic preservation is a conversation with our past about our future. Through historic preservation, we learn new things about our history and ourselves. It's an important way for us to transmit our understanding of the past to future generations. You know, I don't like to see these kinds of opportunities being foreclosed. Uh, the more prominent you can make any kind of historic display in a new building, the happier I will be. And I'll, I'll stop there. Thanks, Roger. That was very helpful. Um, Frida, did you have anything? Um, not really. I do agree with a lot of what Roger said. It seems like the, uh, like the applicant is not willing to to not uh, demolish the building. Um, I would be interested though, because they did um, express a willingness to commemorate, um, you know, what happened in the building. So I would be interested to know if, you know, what options you want to put on the table, but at least, uh, you know, I think it's, um, it's encouraging that you are willing to do that. And I do acknowledge, even as I say this, that it is the last um, relic on that building. So the fact that all the buildings around it have been approved before, I mean, I can see why you, you're you adamant that you wanna to do this. So pretty much, um, yeah, I just love to hear what, um, recommendations you might have to acknowledge what happened in the building. Yeah, and we'd like your recommendations on that as well. And Carlo, you might have yeah. some ideas. Yeah, um, I think uh, one of the things that, that's that's forgotten about, right? Um, I mean, the, the history speaks for itself. But this Virginia uh, Mills, and I did a little little research on her through the Totos, and uh, actually overheard uh, uh, Shirley's one of Shirley's uh, talks on it. But uh, really, I guess uh, she should, you know, it's a success story, right? She was she was never forced out. She retired after nearly forty years, I guess, of operating there. So. Um, you know, so this is kind of, you know, so this, it's, it, it wasn't, it, it, there was no reason for her to leave other than she just got older and, and tired of working and, and they had a party there for her and everything. And, um, so we wanted to celebrate that and the building as it stands today from a historic perspective is not the building that was built at all, it was a clobbered building, uh, did not contain that one section where Shirley's, uh, where, I'm sorry, where Virginia's uh, salon was. And uh, the store, it was, it was rather different. So I'm not sure when the stucco went up, but 
I, I'm assuming around 1930, 1933 or so, that's when this, the uh, stucco seems to have gone up on the building. But it's a very different building than what was originally built. Thanks. Um, Shirley, did you want to say a few words? Um, yes, I do respect the Momos because they really have contributed in our community. But as um, one who grew up in this town and one who wants to preserve our history, um, I do have um, problems with um, Miss Virginia Mills' beauty salon being removed. Uh, one of the reasons we have 29 heritage plaques is to designate the places that used to be. Our businesses, because we couldn't shop on Nassau Street, our businesses because, our, because we were redlined, our businesses because of how Princeton treated us. So to, um, when you take these buildings, I think that you should keep the facade of the building, just like the Robeson House. The Robeson House was in dire need of repair, but they're keeping the, the, keeping the house. They're not knocking it down, they're redoing the house. The same thing with our colored Y, our colored Y, which is now the Arts Council, that building stayed there. So there should be some kind of way that, that, that you can continue to grow as a business, but keep the facade of the building that was there. And I know that Mrs. Mills was not forced out. She retired because she was older. Something else came in there. I remember going past there to give a tour and someone said, you can still see the writing um, on the window that says Virginia Mills Beauty Salon. That's not true because that's a different window, but the building is there. The same thing with Briggs uh, restaurant that was taken down, that's now a parking lot, that's now going to be an apartment building or whatever, or Mr. Griggs's house where Elements is. So we have lost, I know when we um, worked to make this a 20th historic district, we did say we won't go on the other side of Jackson Street. So I guess you can say you were kind of saved that that's not a historic part of the Witherspoon Jackson community. But, um, and you know, even the house that's on Green Street that was destroyed, that was my uncle's house. The house that was destroyed with that pretty front. And then the person who built the house moved out and somebody else moved in. So all of, the, all of our establishments are being replaced by, yeah, I see you looking, you know which house I'm talking about, um, are being replaced by businesses. And um, I'm just concerned that we're losing our history. And those of you who hadn't grown up in Princeton and didn't go through a segregated Princeton and couldn't do certain things because it was redlined, you don't care. I mean, and when I say you don't care, I'm taking it um, nicely because you want business, but we want to keep our history. And that's, that's where I am. But you, you'll do what you're going to do. And I understand that and I support what you're going to do. But I think that you should keep not only the memory, but you should keep part of those buildings. Thank you, Shirley. All mm -hmm. right, I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna go over to Elric. Uh, I wanna add my, my uh, congratulations to the Momo family for, for really being part of the community and making, oh. and making an effort to be, uh, to be cognizant of, of the history of the town that they've adopted with the hope that, I think the town has certainly more than adopted their many enterprises. Um, and, they, and they live right in the community, right, right, right in, that, in that area. The other thing is that I know from having looked at a couple of, uh, looked at a property with them up in Montgomery Township some years ago as a potential barn restaurant, um, their regard for architecture. Um, the, the family has shown in many instances um, that, they, that they have a real eye for architecture and an eye for the character of the town. I understand the dilemma on that corner. Um, and as Shirley was saying, I, I interviewed Mr. Griggs and he said the town was giving, was, wanted to give him, this is back around 1970, something over $100,000, which was a huge amount of money. And he said, I saved the pennies, I saved the nickels. I would never, I they could offer me a million dollars, I wouldn't leave this property. And it's still known as Griggs Corner. It has a history. Um, it's not actually the, the last of building of the 19th century that's represented on Nassau Street. There's. It's that one reason why the street has 
um, a markedly different character from Palmer Square, the old firehouse, and um, quite a few of the of the stores and restaurants that's come down from Nassau Street. Um, it, 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 this this particular building represents not just Princeton's um, uh, black community, the Italian community through the Totos. If you look at the photograph that I I shared again this morning with um, with Elizabeth. It was at one point an Irish business grocery store in that corner. Um, I have to, the thing I recognize with your family is that you you have looked for opportunities and you haven't been afraid of of problem solving. And I just think that and you. I think there's a real opportunity here to do to get what you want, and 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 prove once again that you are community minded, and that that give this building something of a of a further chance. Um, I thought, and I may be wrong, that there was still a vacant lot on Green Street backing up against Hullfish, but I gather I'm I'm incorrect on that. Um, I I. I think it's intriguing to think about the facade or some part of the building being safe, but I would rather think about, about the possibility of moving it or reconfiguring it. I mentioned the old buildings that are up closer to Nassau Street. There are at least four, which, which were once a whole story lower. Um, they, they, at some point, in the late 19th, early 20th century, they were lifted by a full story and storefronts put underneath them. And I would, I would, I would like you to think about that as a possibility. Um, it would be in keeping with the street. It would preserve at least two full store, stories of interesting, affordable apartments and give you clear space on the first floor. A second alternative is the fact that Witherspoon Street, a lot of Witherspoon Street has been bought up further down the street. Um, we know um, Bob Hillier's interest in that area. Some of the buildings down there are really in, in, in a, a, atrocious condition. And I wonder whether or not there isn't the opportunity, instead of keeping the building on its site and raising it, of investigating through him or looking at the possibility of moving that building probably in two stories, two, two sections down to a new location. But in any event, I, I really think that there's a chance that you can, you can apply your, your instincts toward contemporary commercial architecture and preservation of local landmarks in this project. And I, you know, I think those of us who are involved in preservation would, would do whatever we could to help you investigate whether or not any of those scenarios prove uh, useful, viable for your enterprise. Anyway, too much from me, but thank you very much. Well, thank you, Elric. That was interesting. Um, I don't think anyone had talked about um, the possibility of the of the building being moved. And I don't even know if that is a possibility, but I'd never heard of that before. And that that's interesting. Um, David, did you want to say anything? Uh, of course, I want to say something. Um, <laughs> I always have something to say. Um, I can't really get a, a sense of, of, of Leslie's design yet for the, for the new building, but I know it'll be fantastic. That's, that's, that's a given. And I think that's better than most towns who are losing their their character to kind of uh, the standardized look we see in so many downtowns. This will be unique. It will be cutting edge. It will have lots of neat features to it, and it'll be a great space to go to. Contrasting that, however, is the strong sense of feeling or the strong sense of atmosphere, sense of place you get going into the, the bread company. I, I don't smoke, so I don't go into the little taste of Cuba, but its front is so attractive also. 
I think I did go in there one time just because I wanted to experience the space. But that's my point. It's the, <clears throat> the vanishing number of very cool spaces in our downtown. And I don't know that that's on any one property owner's shoulders. It's come right now that it's, it's these guys, which we all have um, various um, love for their businesses. Um, it's just a very hard situation to be in. And um, having been a person who studied preservation their whole life, the, the suggestion of a plaque saying, you know, this was a pretty building and interesting things happened here, um, frankly is, well, I don't, I don't wanna put a word to it, but it's, I, I think we're all better than that as a society of how we remember our history and as a community here in Princeton, what we want to hold on to, a plaque is, you know, it's an, it's an afterthought. Shirley does a great job writing plaque um, stuff, but I think she'd rather have all the buildings back and um, in, in, in the work that she does and all of us do for the community to kind of let something slip through our fingers and say that, oh, well, we'll, we'll be satisfied by a plaque is very difficult. Um, moving buildings is a, is a great tradition in Princeton. So many have been moved. I haven't thought about that for this one. Um, frankly, probably what I like so much about going into the bread company is both the product, the atmosphere, the conversation you have with the staff. I don't know um, if you move the building, that's a part of it that won't be there. They'll still be at the at the original location, I imagine. So it, it's it's it, it's a um, it's a difficult conversation on a day when, from my house, I can hear the bulldozers um, doing that other thing in town. Um, I guess that's the end of my comments. Thank you. All right. Thank you, David. No, I, I think we had a really thoughtful conversation here. And I mean, I, I'd like to uh, join in in saying how I see both sides. Um, so obviously we all wear the preservation hat, but at the same time, I've seen one property after another being developed on, in this area. And I feel like whether it's uh, like commercial or residential um, needs for the town, the, the central district is changing quite a bit. And I think part of preservation is being aware of that and sensitive to that. And um, I think Elric brings up some really interesting ideas and you know maybe they could be explored. And um, so I'm gonna go to Leighton because you have your hand up, sorry. <laughs> Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. First, let me say congratulations to the Momo brothers and family. Uh, first thing I want to say is the Little Taste of Cuba and the Witherspoon Bread Company will be a colossal loss to the town of Princeton. Uh, I'm not a cigar smoker, but I have very good friends who are. I go in there often just to chat and hang out. There's no place like it in Princeton. Same thing with the bread company. The staff there in the morning is always welcoming and the bread is out of this world. Um, I, I wanna give a nod to both David Shore and Elric because I think they both struck a nerve with me on their comments. Uh, in a perfect world, Elric, if they could move uh, this building like Edgar Palmer did quite frankly, back when he wanted to make Palmer a square, uh, he had to move a lot of African-American people from uh, Baker's Alley up there where the current tiger is down to uh, Witherspoon Jackson neighborhood, what I like to refer as an eight block island. Uh, what is unique about the location of this building is that it is at the corner of what was Jackson Street, a street that no more exists here in Princeton which was the beginning of the African-American neighborhood. Number two, as has been mentioned, it was the home of uh, Miss Mill's beauty salon. And as was mentioned, it was the home of Toto's. 
So what you have is kind of the beginning of the geographic uh, confines of an eight block radius. You have a nod to both the Italian American and the African American experience, all in one beautiful, beautiful location. And something else that was said, and I'm, you know, unlike most people on this call who are design architects, uh, I do have an appreciation for great design, you know, when I see it. But to me, what this could be is a wonderful opportunity to uh, build around the African-American, Italian-American experience and the Jackson Street experience. And I heard, uh, I think David say that, you know, it's great to have plaques, but, but knowing the Momo brothers as I do, knowing their history here uh, in community building, what several have said on this phone, Roger even mentioned how they have gone about their work here. I, I feel really good uh, putting this, 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 colossal opportunity right in both of your laps. And, and, and I you know, don't know what your interior design is of the pizza shop or the bakery and what might happen at Little Taste of Cuba, but certainly there is an opportunity to help the Witherspoon Jackson Historical and Cultural Society in the town of Princeton tell and, and enhance the great story of the African-American, Italian-American experience and highlight that that used to be Jackson Street and everything that happened there. And I think if you can combine and collaborate and coordinate with whatever you do there, I know your design is gonna be fantastic. Uh, the buildings are important, but to me, being a nine design person, the, the, the story overwhelms the building. And I think if you put the right design there and tell the story, the whole story, nothing but the story. So help you, whoever you believe in, I, I would be 100% behind it. I think this is an opportunity for you to do something, perhaps the biggest thing you've ever done here as far as community building is to take the building of a community and the building of a building to help us tell the story. And uh, like I said, I dropped that in your lap and I bet on you to do it well. Thank you, Councilman Newland. <laughs> um, Elizabeth, you have your hand up. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I do want to address what um, uh, Carlos had said about me recommending the demolition of Virginia Mills's um, established uh, business. And it wasn't the intent to demolish it, but to consider alternatives to perhaps preserve part of what still sits in that property. So it could be like, well, let's keep the, the uh, hair salon where Virginia Mills had, but how about knocking down the total building? So, you know, I think the option, and it's not my call on that. It's something that I offer to HPC to consider options on what can be done to preserve the property. Um, or preserve part of the history of it. Um, what's interesting, what Elric talks about moving the building is that the building actually was in a different location, which you know was discussed. This was prior to Paul Ropes and place being built. Um, so um, although it, again, as many have said, would not feel the same because it does have a history now with so many Princeton and other community residents, um, the establishment of the cigar company and uh, the bread company, um, you know, there are compromises that have to be made for preservation. So that's really the comment, like what can we do to compromise preserve? And I know that Shirley had talked about, can we save the facade? I believe that um, there are actually a few buildings over on um, Nassau Street, which is the, um, um, Thomas Sweets, um, and I believe the building next to it, which they actually preserved the facade and the back part of the building was actually demolished because of a fire. So, you know, those types of thoughts are something that are just food for thought for you. Um, if there's an opportunity to be able to integrate that into the design. All right, now, is there anyone else that uh, would like to make comments? I think we went around the, 
Oh, I got um, one. Yes, yes. Like, uh, just as an aside, I have talked to the young lady named Maria, who's the owner, I believe, of Little Taste of Cuba. And she shared with me that somewhere behind the facade in the humidor, there is an old sign uh, of the Virginia Mills Beauty Salon. So might be something you can put into your design when you open up your, your new operation. New operation. Oh, that's very interesting. Thank you. That's very helpful. Um, if there are no other comments, um, yes, Shirley, go ahead. I just want Shirley. to say, I'm sorry, my, uh, my computer died and I had to get back in, but I do want to wish the Momo brothers um, all the best. I'm not against what you're doing. I just am deep into history and um, I know what that, those buildings mean to me. And um, you have been a stalwart in our community. So just know that it's not against, it's just I'm concerned about our history. All right, well, thank you. Um, Ed, do you feel like you have uh, enough for a memo that you can turn around in less than 24 hours? <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Sure, have a good night, okay? <laughs> I, I think the consensus of the board is to be supportive of this uh, organization and the need to obviously upgrade and do a, a, a different type of building. But also, I think we can weave into that conversation all the material you were shared with the applicants about the need for the recognition of the historic uh, nature of the property. So I think uh, Tom, uh, we're sorry we dragged you in and the way, the way that we anticipate uh, these courtesy reviews. I think it's, it was helpful. I would hope you think it was helpful to get all of this shared right now rather than have people uh, sharing this for the first time at the planning board. And I think we can put together a, a positive uh, but constructive uh, suggestions as a courtesy review back to the planning board that will I think uh, sweep in all the things that were discussed today. And we'll do, we'll do that tomorrow. Thank you so much, Ed. And thank you, and thank you again to the Momos for agreeing um, to just talk to us. It's always good to have a discussion and you know, we wanna be collaborative rather than combative. <laughs> thank you. All right, so thanks everyone. Same on the and, side um, of the table. I guess we'll Thank we'll you. see at the planning board. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That was a really great discussion. And I appreciate all the comments. Really, really, really helpful. And um, we're going into one more item. There is a concept review for 11 Madison Street. Um, so you might recall, we did hear a previous concept review and this one is, uh, is different. So, um, we welcome that. As I said, we want to be collaborative. And, um, so, uh, obviously there's no report in a concept review. Um, Ed, I guess you're free. <laughs> So thank you so much. We'll, thank you. we'll see you Get later. Some sleep. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, you got a busy night. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay, so um, do you have everybody you need on this side? Um, Ryan, I've um, promoted, I keep on trying to promote Mindy, but but she's not coming over. I'm All right, on she, she may be calling in from the from a remote location as well so we'll maybe give one more try otherwise it's really eric that uh, we we need to hear right. from uh uh tonight uh, so and he's thank been you. promoted already so yep I yep, maybe yep. Um, <clears throat> so thank you so much um uh, elizabeth uh, julie everyone on the board uh as you recall we were this is a, a another one of those uh, proposed districts and we were here for a courtesy review prior to going to the zoning board for 11 Madison. Uh, we, those happened in very quick succession. Uh, we tried to incorporate some of the thoughts um, 
uh, and, and and then got some more feedback from the uh, from the zoning board. And uh, essentially, we're we're here with a, a new architect, uh, drastically we think revised design that we we hope incorporates a lot of the comments and thoughts that we we heard um, from the courtesy review. Um, and we're here to see if we're going in the right direction uh, so that we can finish up the plans and, and continue. So again, I wanna thank uh, uh, Julie and Elizabeth, particularly for getting us on here tonight. Uh, it's it's a tough back and forth with the schedule. So thank you so much. Well, we love concept reviews and we really hope the planning board starts doing them too because it's honestly kind of the best way to go. So um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll turn it over to Eric who I'll say, as the governor might say, a person who needs no introduction, but allow him to introduce himself very, <laughs> very briefly. Um, Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Um, can I share screen here? Mm -hmm. Yes. I think everybody can share. Yes. Okay, so um, the the location I think that you're all familiar with, and uh, you're also familiar with the previous presentation, and you know what we're looking at here this time is these are exactly the same photographs you saw last time. I actually borrowed them from the previous architect. So the the uh, subject property is in the middle on the on the top. It's the it's the middle house in a row of five houses that have gable fronts facing the street. Um, uh, directly across the street, the uh, story is a little more mixed. But the the uh, change we're looking at this time around is that in fact we're not looking at taking the house down and rebuilding it, but we're looking at um, renovating the existing house and keep its, keeping its existing roof form facing the street, its existing width, um, really not changing the, the uh, gable and the roof facing the street at all. And then a few ch minor changes around the, uh, the porch and then also at the front. Um, the street actually has a variety of different uh, street, uh, street treatments, different kinds of bays. Some of them are one story, some are two, some are angled. Some are shingled. There's actually quite a variety. Um, so, it, although on the the five houses in the row with number eleven, uh, all of them still have sort of a very similar gable at the top. Um, in terms of the site plan, uh, uh, each of the the plans coming up show, show the existing condition on the left and the proposed condition on the right. So here you can see where. The, uh, at the rear of the site, we are adding a garage. We're keeping the driveway. This, this house has sort of this um, uh, very nice kind of connection to Willow Street for car parking at the rear. Uh, but we are making the house longer. We're making it deeper onto the site. And at the front, the existing porch projects eight feet from the front facade of the building. But it's clear in its construction that it was built in two pieces. It was built first as a six foot porch. And then there was a little two foot addition to sort of push it out just a little bit closer to the sidewalk. And what we're doing is where on the right side, you can see that dotted line um, right here, uh, where, where, where the, the new bay that is proposed projects out six feet like the original porch did. Um, I, just to go quickly through the plans, the plan here is actually for a much more modern house. Uh, so what we're looking at in the interior is uh, a, a, a substantial renovation of the interior um, while still retaining the, uh, the, out, the exterior form at the front of the house. Um, again, very simple on the left is the existing, on the right, um, you know, some, some changes for bedrooms, bathrooms, things like that. And then third floor right now, there is some attic space and uh, we'll continue to have, have uh, usable attic space on the third floor. So at the front, on the left is the existing, the um, existing gable front at the uh, second and third story, the uh, porch and front door, which have been modified over time. And on the right, what we're looking at then is the proposed design, which has a two-story bay window projecting from that front facade um, and a, uh, uh, 
uh, I'll come back more to materials later, but we're looking at, at sort of a, a, met a metal shake in the gable, um, which sort of works with some of the other materials we're looking at for the exterior of the house. And I'll talk a little bit more about materials when we're looking at the colored uh, renderings. Um, right side of the house, uh, you can see on the top the existing, down below the proposed. Um, you can see the front wall of the house is not moving. The porch on the existing, you can sort of see where there's three windows, that's the existing porch, and then one more window, which was the added one, and the new bay projects out as far as that original uh, three window porch. Other than that, uh, windows on the side elevation are rearranged uh, in order to accommodate a new interior plan. On this side of the house, there is a bit of space because the adjacent house has a driveway. Um, on the other side, the left side, the um, uh, it, it's actually much tighter over there. The, the, that house is a little bit closer. On both sides, this house, number 11, only has about a three foot side yard on both sides and we're not, we're not changing that. And then the rear elevation substantially changed, um, extended back on the lot, um, more glass, more open to the rear, um, and then a new gable following the lines of the front gable extending towards the back with some dormers on it in order to give a little more space at the, uh, at the third floor. So I'll run through a few uh, renderings. Again, I want to mention that you know, the, the uh, program here is to modernize this house. The client very much would like to have a much more modern house. Um, and what we're doing here is really looking at, you know, retaining the form of the historic house and some of the features of the historic house, horizontal siding, bay window, uh, muttoned windows that break down the scale, um, but also bringing in some more modern materials. The, the uh, siding that you're looking at here, we're, we're thinking of a uh, Shoshugi Bond kind of siding that would still have a treatment similar to clabber, you know, horizontal clabber that you see on other houses, um, but it would be a, a, a more modern material. The gable, the gable front material, you see that that is actually a metal shingle, but is also uh, recalls very much some of the some of the shingle patterns on other houses. Also, the roof material, we're looking at a metal roof. And then the bay window is actually quite open and transparent, um, I think is, is personally, when I walk down a sidewalk, I really enjoy sort of a house that has a, a big open glass bay window because it lets you peek in. Um, and so that's what we're looking at here, a very open and glassy uh, bay window in the front. Um, and uh, we haven't drawn in the adjacent houses because it would be a lot more work to draw them, but also um, to be able to show you that the side elevations here the other houses are close enough that, in fact, you know, there isn't much going on on the side elevations because the houses are, are relatively close together. <clears throat> and that's the right side. Again, you can see the dormer at the third floor and then the uh, extension of the rear. Uh, there is a vertical seam there where the house is, is extended towards the rear. Um, at the rear, there are some uh, small patios and decks at both the first and second floor. And then at the third floor, there's an actual deck off of the, off of the back. Um, and there you can see the dormers as well. The garage, um, uh, the, uh, the, the garage is not intended as an important architectural statement here. Um, I think that the garage, we wanna keep it as simple and low profile as possible. And in fact, it would have growth around it um, so, that, so that it would be green, it would have a little more landscaping and we just haven't gotten there yet. Uh, the garage also has a green roof. So that when you're on the upper levels of the uh, uh, house and looking down on it, you're looking at a green roof rather than a than a membrane roof. Um, the left side of the house, similar to the right, um, at the rear, you're you're seeing sort of some openings there that uh, allow that are open to a a, a patio area um, at the first floor. Uh, full on left side again with the bay window towards the front and then we're, we're we're back around to the front and then a roof plan of the of the site and then one last slide showing some 
some of the materials. I think the exterior siding, we're looking for something like uh, like what's on the left there, a, a shoshugiban, a, a, you know, a Japanese burn cypress or something like that. We're looking at a few different materials, but we're generally looking in the, in the gray range, but still looking at some contrast between them. Um, that gable front, is uh, is shown in the in the middle. That's a uh, a, a, a painted uh, painted metal. And then on the right, you see the windows, which are muntined windows um, to break down their scale with a, uh, a, a dark uh, dark frame and muntin. Um, I think that that concludes most of what I have to show you in terms of the in terms of the variances that are required. Most of the variances required are because the house is already a, uh, on, a, on an undersized lot. So front yard setback, side yard setbacks, all of those things, while a variance is required, there's, there's no change for any of those things. The rear yard um, is uh, shrinking from what it is now, but it still, it still meets requirements. So there is no variance required for the rear yard. The setback to height ratio, we are actually not changing because we're keeping the, uh, the existing front gable and the existing side gables, the dormers fit within the setback, height setback ratio. So, so we're not looking for a, uh, a, a new variance there because we're not changing it, but because the house is getting longer and a, a little bit deeper, um, a variance is only required for that reason. Uh, building height, there is no change to the building height. Um, floor area ratio, is increased but is slightly decreased from the presentation that you previously saw. Impervious coverage, uh, actually were previously, on the previous design, a variance was required. With this design, a um, variance is not required for coverage. We meet the coverage requirements. Um, I, if there are any questions, I think otherwise that, that covers what I, what the, the points that I needed to make. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, let's see. Um, if we could stop the screen share, then I can see everybody a little bit better. Um, and I can go around and get comments. Um, so who, who wants to start, uh, Elric? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, certainly having seen previous iteration, this is fast improvement. I, um, I think the, the scale, the materials color, uh, uh, relationship of, of open um, fenestration and, and clabbered and all of that is, is great. Um, interior, it's, it's a subway platform, but it's somebody else's subway platform. And I'm not, doesn't, we have no purview over that anyway. The, the light is, is coming in from the front and the rear. Um, I question, I think that, I, I think that um, replacing the porch with a glassed in area works well. And I like the idea that those two stories are stacked. Um, uh, I, I do question the glass front door. I think the, there should be a, some sort of a contrast between the door and the windows because the windows are, are such a strong feature and the door feels, it, it doesn't feel like a front door to me. Um, I, 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 I have some questions. Um, I, if, if variances had to be sought, I would, I would seek them for the garage. I, 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 I'd love to see it. I'd like to see it moved around on that very small backyard to provide more of a view from the house. And it seems like to begin with, it's high enough that if, it, if it, the, the roof line could be dropped by even two feet, it would let in more light, and it would feel it would feel more open at the back of that long um, space on the first floor. You'd still get the same um, green sward in front of you on the second floor. I don't know who goes up to mow it, but that's not my problem either. Um, I, I I presume you want to have a parking spot and a and a, the garage both back there. But if there's some way of shifting it one way or the other. Uh, to provide some semblance of a backyard. I think that would be a good thing. Um, and finally, I, I, um, I do question the fenestration. Um, I, it, it just seems to me like that's an opportunity to bolster two over two windows, which you'll find in that area a lot. 
and uh, it is a way of, of just uh, playing with that on a CAD drawing or whatever, just to see what it would look like with larger panes, somewhat fewer panes, and but um, you'd still get the the rectilinity and whatever. Um, I I just like that to be examined. Not for me, but thank you. Thanks, Eric. Um, let's see. Anyone else, Roger? You have any comments? Um, yeah, I'd like it. I think uh, you know. Uh, I'm glad that we're having this dialogue, and uh, I, you know, it just um, to me, it's now part of the neighborhood, and uh, creatively so. Uh, it has its unique identity, but it is scaled to fit the neighborhood. Um, and you know, I'm glad you can get the extra space. I, I, I love the deck in the back. Again, that's not visible from the street, but I think uh, there's more usable space in this uh, um, version. Um, and I am not able to give detailed recommendations like Elric, but in general, I, I think it's a, uh, an excellent uh, rendering. Thank you. Uh, Shirley, did you want to comment? Just with Roger, I'm a historian, not an architect, but being with the commission, I've learned so much from all the expert architects that I agree that it's a much better rendering than what we saw before. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Frida, did you want to comment? Um, yes, I think it's uh, happy you fired the other guy because this, uh, <laughs> 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 this, uh, these drawings are a lot better and definitely um, from the street uh, suits the neighborhood. Um, I do feel like the garage kind of just is out there, but that's just, you know, I'm sure you were hastily finding, trying to find a solution, so um i would still take a look at the color of the materials on the front um it just is it's still very dark um you know the rest of the commission likes it you know i do think it's very dark and it will stand out on that street um you know you could bring in some if you wanted to be real funky bringing uh color on the door or you know something like that but yeah, all in all, I think you did a super job and uh, it's a good, very good plan. Thanks, Frida. Uh, David, did you want to say anything? Um, no, thank you. Okay. I mean, I, I definitely feel like the roof, the roof, the roof, like, seeing the gabled roof it's like a big sigh of relief like okay we can you know like all of a sudden everybody's sort of on board and the rest of it um i mean to be from a, a legalistic point of view we really don't deal with the back we just deal with the the streetscape and um to frida's point i do think um it's a little dark like if you want to explore like she said, a colored door maybe or something and then lighten up other places. I'm not, I'm just saying it, it might blend in even more, but I do see a big, big improvement. And um, I wanted to echo my colleagues in um, how much better this appears. And uh, also that, you know, we, we're very glad you listened. So thank you, thank you. Um, I th think that's about it. Is there any, any other comments? We don't really vote or make a report or anything. That's any, if you have any other questions for us, go ahead. Otherwise, um, no, they basically me, uh, up. unless Eric has any other specific questions, just thank you guys. And I'll, I'll just note that the, the, the backyard for the placement of the garage is challenging. There's, it's not just getting the parking space back there, but there's a kind of a existing entrance from that back alley that has to be navigated. So there, it's uh, unfortunately kind of limiting where that could go, uh, but but good good feedback even there as well, just to, to document it or explain it if, if there's not a lot of options uh, for, for relocating. Is there any way that that could be treated more like a carport? 
So it could be an out, outside entertainment area when it wasn't served, you know, with maybe like a closet area for tools and, and oh, mower and whatever for that roof. Ironically, a carport would not get the floor area. So as a garage, there's a floor area credit. Uh, as a carport, we wouldn't actually get that. So they would, the, the, the town would kind of penalize us with the, on the zoning code for, for not closing the walls in. Uh, but uh, uh, if, if we could grab that from the, from the zoning board, if they would give us the leeway, it's worth maybe considering. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks well, thanks so time. much for coming in. We really appreciate your time. And uh, again, thank uh, looks good. Thank you. Thank you. You'll, you'll see us again soon. I think we'll 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 revise our plans and, and get them to zoning. And I, I I don't know if there'll be another actual more formal review uh, before we uh, go to, to zoning again. But uh, stay tuned and and thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you Take much. care. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. This is the end of our tasks here. Are there? Um, let's see. We're, oh, are we in the public? Public comment. I yes. think. Uh, yeah. Is there anyone from the public here who'd like to comment? Nobody's hand is raised at this point. Okay. All right. Your big chance. Okay. Nobody. <laughs> nobody wants to comment. All right. Um, let's see the uh, staff reports. Anything going on? Elizabeth? Mm, no, nothing. <laughs> okay, just so you know, uh, a couple things. <laughs> Number one, you might have seen the, and I, Justin's here so he can say something, but you've seen the yellow signs that say, what do you want? Okay, so that's um, the survey for the master plan. So please go on the website. Justin, you wanna plug your signs? <laughs> Yes, please. Um, that's the first part of our uh, master plan. It's an economic development study that's going to feed into an analysis and just the economic element uh, that we're adding. There's going to be future surveys and, and, you know, with historic preservation being an element uh, of our current master plan and one that we're continuing, um, those surveys will more uh, address historic preservation as well as community facilities, parks, et cetera. So don't be alarmed if you're wondering, you know, is the town only concerned about economic development? Because this is just the first part of this step. And my dog's trying to join. Um, <laughs> uh, so we'll, I'm sorry. Let's see her. No. Let's see her. Yeah. Probably. She's Aww. new. She's, she's not used to Zoom yet. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. So, um, but yeah, we'll be, reach, we'll be reaching I. out. I'm sorry, Art. I'm not used to it either. <laughs> yeah. you heard, but you've heard me bark. <laughs> yeah. uh, so please just at this time, fill out princetonsurvey.org. Um, and then in the future, we're going to be speaking more directly with the HPC and other groups for those other elements. Yeah, I filled it out already. Did it indicate that there'd be uh, further iterations uh, dealing with other topics? Uh, this one didn't necessarily do that. Um, it, it brings you to our engagement hub at the end that we have a soft launch on. Uh, you could look at that. I think we just changed the address to princeton.com slash new or princetonnj.gov slash new master plan. Um, and then that's going to have more of the information about uh, what we're looking to do over the next 11 months or so. It's a much, much better survey than the health department survey. I have to tell you that. <laughs> which I also feel, filled out, but complained about as I was doing. Um, yeah, that's great. That's great. So Justin, is, is anyone going around town to where you put those signs and seeing what people are writing on them? Because I walked down NASA today and there were several that people had written what they wanted. So. Yep. Yep. I, I've been doing that. The, what? Uh, I've been doing that as I can, okay. um, and I've been taking pictures of them because some yeah. of them are actually pretty funny. The one that says yeah. burritos yes. uh, <laughs> right under yeah. it. So when it first happened, we kind of thought, oh, no, we don't want people to go crazy. But then, you know, I'm kind of fun, okay yeah. with it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all, the only thing I'd caution is, is you know, there's no guarantee it's going to be counted uh, compared That's to right. actually taking the survey. So, right. yeah. so, you know, if you want to write about burritos, maybe <laughs> add that you want more burrito restaurants, too. 
Okay. You should use your dog as like the face of the campaign. And, <laughs> that, that, you know, because right. she's really cute. And so mm -hmm. like have a like a cute dog or something. People would love that. Definitely. And uh, as this gets further along, I'm sure I'll be at a table at Heinz Plaza or at the community night out next month. And uh, I'll say if Polly can join if she's available. <laughs> if she's available. <laughs> yeah. uh, Justin? Right. This is Shirley. Yeah. I'm talking yeah. about yeah. Heinz Plaza. I haven't forgotten you. It's just that I put a lot of the old records in certain places and I'm still doing research. So when I find it, I'll get it to you. Okay, we actually, um, I, I was able to find a, a picture in uh, one of the Princeton Monthly articles about Heinz Plaza. Yeah, but um, and I have I, some I, other I, things. Uh, yeah. I I'm have sorry? some other things for you. I said I have some other things for you other than that picture, so I'll get them to you. Okay, great. Um, one thing you will notice if you go to that uh, princetonnj.gov slash new master plan is with the feedback from Ms. Satterfield and others, uh, we actually changed one of the logos to one of our elements to be uh, a feature from the Heinz Plaza gate. So we're trying to do those little things to uh, really make this Princeton's own. All right. Well, thank you, Justin. I know you get your hands full. So <laughs> you can turn off your video. It's okay. Thanks. All right. Um, anyway, so yeah, uh, keep in mind the master plan is a 18 month process and we'll be giving input on the historic element. So you might want to take a look at it and think if we want to, um, you know, make suggestions. Okay. All right, so our, our next meeting is in August. Uh, Elizabeth, do you have the date? Um, yep, it's August 15th. August 15th. All right, is everybody going to be around? Um, Probably. Yeah. With Maybe. Zoom, you don't have to be. Yeah, I know. Right. But I mean, some people, if they travel, they just can't Zoom, you know? Yeah. yeah. I may not be, but off the grid. All right. So we'll just maybe we'll check in a week before to make sure we have a quorum. Okay. 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 Good idea. All right. But anyway, can, thank you so much. Can I just uh, quickly say something? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, I thought Elizabeth was saying something too. Um, I, I think 7074 Witherspoon and the tenant campus revives in me the, the notion that we ought to start looking at individual sites for preservation rather than districts. We've had a little offline discussion on this and Elric um, a couple of years ago began compiling a, you know, a very good list that we added to a little bit. Uh, and Elizabeth informs me that our ordinance allows us to do it. I'm not sure you know, how you do it and if the owner of the site is not interested, how that works. Uh, but I, again, you know, if we're going to start losing sites and be nickel and dimed out of important buildings, um, not to add to our work, but I think we need to start considering uh, individual buildings, uh, uh, emphasizing individual buildings rather than just looking at districts. And, and Roger, the, the whole process really is lined out in the ordinance. So you can see where like, the research you need to do ahead of time and then how it comes to HPC. And so, I mean, it's a pretty involved process. It takes a while, so. Um, and it puts more work on our plate if we're the driving force behind it, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not it's, talking about 20 buildings in a district. We're talking about a single building or group of buildings, but it, you know, we've got what, 600 or something like the, that in Witherspoon Jackson. And um, that meanwhile, there's some, Really important structures that we ought to be, we ought to focus on. And Thank the, you, Roger. And the, I appreciate that comment. Yeah, and, and I think the only thing is, you know, who has the bandwidth to do the research to put together all the documentation that we need to get the ball rolling. Um, and that's not going to be Elizabeth because Elizabeth's got way too much on her plate so we've either got to hire another preservation specialist or you know um 
get more community involvement, but we can't at what we right now, Elizabeth is carrying a heavy load and really needs support. So um, I don't know if maybe there can be a second preservation officer. Um, so I, I guess the question I have, Roger, is are you looking for, are you talking about designation or are you talking about putting it on the master plan as potential districts? Because we do have a ton of them already on that list. And I think that the, the new updated master plan is going to be looking and adding and taking away from that list to update it. Um, I, think, I think we're talking about both, but I mean, we really ought to look at some of the uh, uh, most critical sites first. And, and as I said before, I really started to zero in on that earlier. Right. Um, so I think that one of the things that I, and I had talked to Justin about this um, for him being the acting planning director is that, um, you know, at one point with our other administration, um, we did get the funding to be able to do our design guidelines. And I still think that that's really an important charge that we need to follow up on. Um, and as you know, HPC is probably, I don't know how we're gonna get the money to be able to do these on our own because we've been trying to get the design guidelines for how many years, four years or something like the five years. You know, and each year I try to put in our budget, we talk about it, talk about it. And finally they had given it to us, but then we had the pandemic and that was the first funding that went away. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I think that the, the, the cost to do it is gonna be very important. Mm -hmm. I, I remember 15, 20 years ago when I was talking about that Breuer house that's way back from Princeton Lawrence Bell Road and when I went down there to photograph it, the woman who was living there then, and unfortunately I think she's moved on, she was so excited about it. She would have done anything in her power to see that house preserved. And I think there are other owners who would, who are house proud and have, have devoted their lives to houses that they're, for one reason or another, they're, they're moving on from potentially, and they'd like to see them safeguarded and would work with us, so. Okay. Anyway. Right. Good to know. Can I say that this has been the best part of today's meeting? Um, I think that this getting back to the core of what we do is so important. And I don't know if we're allowed to have work sessions or, or sessions where, you know, it's, I don't know if it has to be closed door, but where we actually just sit down and talk about our business as opposed to, you know, these jam packed agendas. And maybe that's because we have so many districts and we have so little staff. And then if, if not to put you on the spot, but I, I cannot remember what the deal is, why we don't have our, our CLG back in that funding opportunity. Is it something we have to relent with, with the state or they need- It's to... our ordinance, we have to change it. Right, so is that where we should be putting the next energy? Well, we have a legal team that's given, are they done giving us recommendations? Um, I think that what they did was they looked at um, Bordentown. I think that's what Andrea had told us, right? And I think that Ed had worked with them to look at that. So um, yes, so we have that. We're gonna be looking at it. In fact, we got an email from Lindsay at Chippo who's uh, looking for the status update. So hopefully it'll be moving forward. And then we've I gotta we've yeah. gotta get it once we say, well, we don't, I mean, we want to get it approved. So we'd have to give it to council and then council has to approve it and make the changes law. And so there's going to be like a public discussion there. So um, I know for a fact, one of the things they don't like at the state is buffer districts because they have a, a lack of definition and a lack of rooting in the MLUL. And there's a couple other um, things about the, our ordinance they don't like. Um, and then there's the location of the definitions. The state doesn't like how we do that. So it's, mo it's the ordinance. They don't like our ordinance. They want us to update it. They want us to clean it up. 
and to do that, we need lawyers and the lawyers are going to tell us how to word it. Is it a question of amending the current ordinance or do we have to write an entirely new one? I think we can amend it, but it's really, I don't know yet what the lawyers are going to say if we have it's to a like lot start of amend over. No, a I lot think of amending. That, yeah, I think that we obviously want to work with that core because we had um, someone else from the office do it and they started changing everything. And I didn't want to change everything that we didn't need to change. You know, I just want to change really what we were directed to change because otherwise it would just take forever. Um, and right. then if there's other changes that council wants to do, then they can bring that back to us. But right now we're doing it for SHPO. Right, so Justin, you have your hand up and then Layden and then David. <laughs> yep, I, I was just gonna mention that both the things that uh, we've been talking about first, the design guidelines and now this CLG um, and any of those changes that could be made to the ordinance, those are all things that would you know, definitely uh, we'd probably wanna see in the master plan. Uh, it's a planning board document, as you know, but it also has bearing uh, on, you know, creating ordinances and even the council's priorities. So we'll be sure to, to make note of this. And then uh, when we speak with uh, you as a group, or even when you're filling out individual things, if you want to reiterate them, that just gives even more, uh, you know, room for those things to be in the plan and then follow through on. Okay. And Layden, you have your hand up? Yes. What is a CLG? Oh, certified, certified local, local government. government. It means that we're eligible for certain grant money from the state. So it's important because it, it's tied to money. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And we lost it when we consolidated. Yeah. Both the borough and the township were separately CLGs. When we became one municipality, they said start over again. Right. Although they did send me the certification that both municipalities are still certified. So I guess the right hand is talking to the left hand. Uh, and David, what did you want? Uh, oh, I, I, I just, um, uh, no, I think you've answered all the questions. It's the it's the irony, though, of when, when actually when I was on the National Association of Certified Local Governments organization, you know, Princeton used to be looked at as one of the leaders around the country that that got things done and our ordinance, you know, did a lot of good work. Um, and then that we were, you know, used our, our grant money well and we applied for grants well. And, and now we're, we've fallen behind in the race and it's very frustrating. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, these these lawyers. The, so Ed's office has been working on this for what, like a couple months? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there okay. is a renewed new effort. That's great to hear. Yeah. I guess yeah. I didn't know that. Congratulations. Great. Yeah. So and Layden, yes. Yeah. What um, just a general question to the board. What, if anything, can I do to help? I guess, you know, when it goes to council, you can say how important it is that we got to make these changes because if we don't, we don't get the money, the grant money that goes along with it. So we got to wait for Ed's office to give us the changes to the ordinance. And then we're going to give those changes to you guys. And then if you guys approve them, then presumably the state will approve us as a certified local government. Okay, well, Another way to look at it is we'll take an extra staff member, but then we'll be okay with grants to fund everything else. Yeah, and we could use an extra um, staff member because Elizabeth has got 100 applications a year and no help at all. So that would be helpful. All right, if she had a, like somebody trained in preservation who could really take on some of this stuff because right now I'm telling you, she's got more administrative like approvals and there's there's a lot more going on than just our meetings a lot more so Is christine you, available she was interested well, in going back on the commission she is in fact, yes in fact i had talked to uh the mayor um and he said that he was going to reach out to the council to see if there was any objection um because she can be one of the people who are out of town to be on the commission so i haven't heard back yet um, I will follow up with the mayor 
soon because we are still two members short. And I don't think that, 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 that SHPO wants to see us two members short either. I'm, I'm very confident that we'll be uh, hearing more about Ms. Lewandowski in the very near future. Good. That's good because she's a she's an incredible resource. Like wow, yeah, and, she, and she and she needs to be busy. So she she would be a really good person. <laughs> she needs she needs a task. You know, she's like a border collie or an Australian shepherd. Got to have a task. Duly noted. Yeah, yeah, surely. Yeah, sound, sound is bad. Who were you talking about? Christine, Christine. Lewandowski. Oh, yes. <laughs> I got on the board when she was first that day. Yeah, <laughs> she's yep. great. She's great. All right, this has been okay. a great conversation to make up for that roaring sound I hear from here of buildings being crumbled. I made sorry. my day. Oh, yeah. I, right. I heard that it's the first two buildings and then they're coming back, I think, this oh. week or something for the gymnasium. I don't think that was part of it. The gymnasium is what they've been destroying the most. Oh, it is? Yeah, oh, that, I gym, that, I heard... that gym is so beautiful. Oh. And they're oh. selling the windows um, from Hudson Valley House Parks. It's... Yes, I, Cliff Zink told me about that. But um, anyway, and of course, the local newspapers don't show any of those architectural details that would make more people recognize what a loss those buildings will be. Now, I'm going to ask you again, what buildings are you talking about? My my sound is really bad because something's wrong with my cord and I miss no, that. Mine's terrible like this the whole time, but yeah. It's the We're Princeton Theological Seminary. Got it. Okay. Thank you for that. Yes. All right, everyone. I have one more official duty. Yes. And that is, will anyone propose that we adjourn? <laughs> I think you just did. <laughs> I'll say All, right. All right. Thank you, everyone. And we'll Bye. see you soon. Um, we'll check in about August. So August 15th. Okay. Be right. safe. Be healthy. Be well. Bye. Live long right, and prosper. <laughs> oh, you know what, Julie? Oh, you know what? I, I just noticed that um, that one person wanted to talk about the uh, the Center for Theological Inquiry, and I just saw that they had a Q and A, and she was the one who had her hand raised. Remember the beginning of the meeting? I think she supported it, but it was Jill Berry from Morvin, and she yeah, supported she her comments. I, so, there was another one, Kara Shade from Kara Slade, Church. yes. Yeah, Slay, I, I believe they supported it as well. Yeah, oh, okay. she said, hi, I'm here to speak in support of CTI from Trinity Church. Okay, yeah. So the minute should recognize that. Okay, everyone, thanks so much. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Bye-bye. Okay.